Life isn't easy, and we all have struggles. For some, though, those struggles are so strong that they can physically prevent you from carrying out your dreams. You can be one of the most talented sports people in the world, but if you're born into the wrong circumstances and the wrong mind, you're inevitably going to struggle. From abusive marriages, outbursts at work, and the belief that you are Jesus Christ, this story is proof that inner demons and mental health battles can impact us all. That said, we all have within us the power to fight, live on, and take back control. If you're looking for grit and determination, this man has it in abundance. Welcome to the story of Delonte West, the man that never gave up. Delonte West was born on the 26th of June, 1983, in Washington, D.C. Although a beautiful baby boy with his whole life ahead of him, his childhood was anything but enjoyable. Very early on, his parents divorced, leaving him living alone with his mother in a fairly bad neighborhood. With little money to go around, he grew up in poverty, which did not help his mental state whatsoever. He began to feel excluded from society and lacked a sense of belonging. To add to his torment, as a biracial child with red hair, other children in the neighborhood would make fun of him. His only sanctuary was his growing love of basketball. For him, this was the only time he could completely switch off and feel free. He was really good at it too. By the age of 12 though, he suffered a serious leg injury, which forced him to stop. As a result, Delante entered a deep depression and stopped going to school. Things got so dire for him that he tried taking his life on multiple occasions. When his mother couldn't handle the pressure any longer, she decided to send him to live with his dad. This would be fine if Delante's dad was a kind, compassionate man who was fully prepared to nurse his son back to health, but alas, he was not. In fact, he didn't care about the problems Delante was having at all. With little support and direction, he fell into the wrong crowd at his new school and became an addict. Just as it seemed like Delante was on a one-way path to destruction, something marvelous happened. His leg, previously injured, finally healed. At last, he could return to his sanctuary, the basketball court. He wasted no time and quickly became a basketball superstar. Such was his skill that in his senior year, he averaged an amazing 20.2 points, 6.5 rebounds, 3.9 assists, and 3.1 steals per game, and was crowned Washington Post All-Met Basketball Player of the Year. He went on to lead his team to their very first ever tournament appearance, making it all the way to the Maryland 4A Championship. Once high school was over, Delante enrolled at St. Joseph's University and signed up to the basketball team alongside future NBA player Jameer Nelson. It was noted very early on that Delante and Jameer had something special. With their skills, St. Joseph's Hawks finished 27-1 in the main season, earning an elite 8 NCAA tournament and finished the year with a record 30-2 score. After his junior year, he entered the 2004 NBA draft and was picked up by the Boston Celtics. But during his rookie season, he was again hit with a series of injuries, which forced him to sit out many games, but determined not to let his absence from the court spark a resurgence in his demons. He dug deep to find the courage to heal, and heal he did. By his second season, he scored a career-high 31 points against Minnesota Timberwolves, helping the Celtics to a 124-117 victory. Over the course of the next few years, his achievements would catapult to include a trade deal move to the Cleveland Cavaliers and the biggest shot of his career in April 2008 in a playoff game against the Washington Wizards. However, back at home, things weren't going so well in Delonte's private life. In 2007, his then-girlfriend Karen Taylor apparently lashed out at him and reportedly tried to choke him when he attempted to break up with her. She was eventually charged with domestic assault and battery. But this clearly had a lasting impact on Delante, and his behavior started to change. In 2008, onlookers were exasperated when he exploded on a referee. He also went on to lash out against a teammate after two preseason losses. Growing increasingly concerned about his outburst on the court, his coaches urged him to speak to a behavioral therapist. It was concluded that he was suffering from bipolar disorder. Delante and his then-wife Kimberly Awad, whom he married in July 2009, would also part ways just one month after his diagnosis. 
Things had gotten really bad, but unbeknown to Delante, his troubles had only just begun. In September 2009, he was stopped by police for a routine traffic violation. On closer inspection, it was reported that he was carrying three guns on his person. One was in his waistband, a second strapped to his leg, and a third was discovered in a guitar case on his back. When questioned why he had the weapons in his possession, he explained that his mom had told him some young family members had found them in the closet. Putting the unusual explanation to one side for one second, Delante did not have a permit to carry, and he was arrested. He was subsequently sentenced to eight months of electronic monitoring, two years of probation, and 40 hours of community service and counseling. Back on the court in 2010, he went to play for the Dallas Mavericks, but got released the following season due to more unpredictable mood swings. Now, with little money coming in, Delante was struggling to provide for his new girlfriend, Caressa Suzette Madden, who was pregnant with their first child. It was winter, and to help her keep warm, he apparently filled the house with portable heaters and heated water on the stove so she could take a bath. Things were so tough that when he proposed to her, he did so with a piece of string, saying, It's all I can afford, baby. I'm broke. Heat ain't working. Brain ain't working right. But I love you. They would marry in 2013 with a low-key wedding, and their son, Cash West, would arrive shortly afterwards. Perhaps it was the need to provide for his newly expanding family, or maybe it was just his determination to succeed. Whatever it was, Delante did make it back to the basketball court once more, albeit briefly, signing for the Texas Legends in the NBA D-League. Things seemed to be going well initially, but alas, they released him in March 2015, ending his basketball career altogether. For a short while, things went very quiet, but in 2016, signs that his mental health had taken another downward turn were confirmed when he was spotted barefoot wearing what looked like a hospital gown standing in front of a jack-in-the-box in Texas. Then, four months later, he was seen again by commuters begging for money. Later in January 2020, another bizarre video hit social media of Delante getting beat up in the middle of the street. He appeared to be homeless and certainly didn't look well. Police body cam footage showed him in handcuffs explaining to officers that he believed he was a Navy SEAL as well as the President of the United States. Naturally, the hard strings were pulled and some ex-colleagues couldn't help but feel sorry for him. This was the site of the once legend now being reduced to a fragment of his former self. Boston Celtic general manager Danny Ainge rallied in to help him and offered him a scouting job with them. But again, his inner demons would not allow it. Delante failed to turn up on many occasions, leaving Danny with no choice but to release him from duty. Then came more help, this time in the form of Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban, who paid for Delante to go to rehab. This did help, at least to start. He even managed to secure a job at the very treatment center where he checked in at. However, as is always the case, Delante took one step forward and two steps back. In October 2021, he was arrested for banging on the doors of the Boynton Beach Police Station in Florida whilst holding bottles of vodka and beer. He claimed to be an undercover agent, as well as Jesus Christ, and explained that he was better than both Michael Jordan and LeBron James at basketball. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. I was better than LeBron James. I'm better than Jordan. It really is truly heartbreaking to see a man with so much talent continually miss great opportunities due to the constant battle with his demons. One thing is for sure though, it doesn't matter how many times he's knocked down, Delante West is a man of grit and determination. He without a doubt always gets back up again. In fact, in February 2022, he was spotted looking well and getting some shots in at a gym. And in June 2022, a video went viral of him being quizzed outside of a store saying that he was okay. You okay? Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I got children. I'm in between jobs, um, it's not, you know, uh, people only can help me as much as they can, you know, but um, as a man, I gotta do what I gotta do for my babies. We just hope that this time, for his babies, his wife, his fans, and most of all for himself, he can finally find the inner peace he has been searching for and truly heal. We wish him well. See you next time.